Hello everybody, it's the Fat Philosopher here. I'm coming to you today to actually make a little bit of a video about the internet talent KDH and his recent attack on tennis guitars. I'd like to state here that I'm not a hater of KDH. I think he plays the guitar well. I think he's moderately entertaining on his YouTube channel. But I let's say that I find the way he conducts himself on his internet channel to be wanting, especially in this case with 10S guitars. So let's begin. Now who is KDH? I'll throw a picture here of him uh, holding two of his uh, favorite guitars here. And as you can see here, he's a guitar gear uh, YouTuber. Likes to talk about strings and guitars he's played and stuff like that. Which is of course a very crowded market. And so in order to stand out, KDH made a decision about a year and a half ago that he's going to trash talk and expose, in his words, other YouTubers in the guitar world. Most notably, he's done uh, Dren Fricker, he's done uh, Rob Chapman, Stevie T, he's done um, Jeff Kiesel, and a couple others there. Basically, his way of working is that he tries to villainize these people, show them to be my hypocrites and dishonest as a way to uh, kind of boost views on his own channel. Now, of course, if these people really were that terrible and dishonest and need to be demonized as he did, it might be fine, but it seems to be, he seems to be enjoying it a little bit. Now, I'm not saying that's all what his channel is. It's not. He's got other things on there as well. But let's face it, when you say KDH, most people think him as the guy who's obsessed with Rob Chapman or the guy that's like hating on Stevie T. These are not just one-off things. He kind of encourages it. Let's take a clip at, look at his clip of one of his own videos, his own words there. There's a couple more people on my list for videos like these, so watch out. You never know who's going to be next or when it's going to happen. Now, judging from that statement, I would say that he wants to make a career basically being the self-appointed police of the guitar gear world on YouTube. And his most recent attack has been on the, the guitar company 10S Guitars based in Beijing, China. This is kind of a bizarre, it starts off with KDH talking about how he got to get these emails from this guy who apparently has his guitar being delayed and he's not getting enough and he hasn't had much contact with 10S guitars. Imagine that, a guitar being delayed and the maker not replying instantly to emails. No way! Yeah, yes way. Actually, this is not that uncommon, you know. I've had, uh, I've emailed uh, Fender, Gibson, Dean on times that I did not get a reply back in regards to lefty guitars. I've had a custom bill that's supposed to take six months, take eight months, and right now I'm waiting. I'm waiting on a guitar from Fender that they're telling me it's going to take 14 months to make. I'm in month seven of that, but so it happens. So it's not something that's unique to tennis guitars. But anyways, KDH's soul went out to this guy here, and he decided he wanted to help him. So what he did, he con emailed tennis guitars twice. Did not get a reply back. Tennis thought it was spam, which is quite common to get spam quite a bit. He then went to, I guess, a former employee who gave the owner's uh, Snapchat number or something. Kind of like a guy who knows a guy kind of thing. And he didn't get a reply on that. It might be noted that KDH doesn't mention how long he waited for a reply, and he didn't mention whether or not he decided to uh, contact them in their native language, which is Chinese, right? A matter in Chinese. But anyway, so after the three emails, KDH des decides with this guy that the best way to go proceed from this is to make a threatening video to 10S, basically trying to expose them as being crooks. This was the best way he thought to proceed. Serious? No, it isn't the best way to proceed, is it? Right? There's many other things he could have done, right? But let's say it is the best way to proceed. So what does he do? He puts on a video, and which has now been, I guess, uh, privatized. Or as in Italy, it's been privatized, by the way. And which was entitled, is paraphrasing, see, is tennis guitars a scam? You heard me right, is tennis guitars a scam? He did not attack the quality of the guitars, he did not criticize the quality of management. Instead, he goes straight away and calls them all crooks. When I say he calls them crooks, I'm not saying he just mentions it casually in the video. 
No, no, it's right there in the title. 10S Guitars is a scam? Question mark. So he saves himself from libel by putting in the question mark, right? But basically it's a kind of a libel type statement, right? And it's such that even if you didn't click on the video, you could see the... If it came up in your news it would be right there, 10 Guitars is a scam. Now you could have picked another title. You could have said, Concerns about 10 Guitars, for example. Or just 10 Guitars, which is what his reply video is stating now. But why did he then decide to 10 Guitars being criminals? Well, using a meme that he himself used in regards to Rob Chapman is because of this. Yes, clickbait. You know, Tennis Guitars has a very big online presence. It's been, of course, been in contact with many YouTubers. And if they are really a scam artist and all these other YouTubers being associated with them, it cause a lot of trouble. But it makes good clickbait, doesn't it? Right? Which is kind of surprising because I thought KDH hated clickbait. I mean, didn't he really go on and on about Rob Chapman using clickbait titles? In specific, I remember he mentioned that uh, Rob Chapman once put Led Zeppelin in a title as clickbait. Of course, uh, KDH would never do anything like that. I might mention that in this video that guitar was never owned by Jimmy Page. Just somebody thrust it in his hand to go play it one day at a, a bar that he just happened to be at. He has never owned that guitar. Clickbait title. So it looks like KDH is now all for using clickbait titles and accusing people of being scam artists. So are Tenetics, Tennis a scam company? Well to be a scam company, based, the definition of scam is to deceive a person by promising them a good or a service that you have no intention of fulfilling or giving. Right? But if you look at it, you know, tennis guitars do make guitars and a lot of people do have them. Granted, there's some people that have had trouble and had complaints about tennis, but you look on, just take a look at the reverb page, you know, it seems like a lot of people like them too. And if it was me, I wouldn't go casually calling people thieves. You know, there's people that work there, right? You know, his families depend on those jobs, but he is, has no problem trying to throw them under the bus to get his buddy his guitar faster. Which makes me ask, is this true though? KDH has the confidence of putting Tennis guitars are scam is a scam in his title. Of course, he's got the evidence to back it up, right? So let's take a look at uh, what he had to say. The video, of course, is down now, but this is my summarizing. Please forgive me if my summarizing is often occasionally. But he begins by mentioning that Tennis guitars, the owner once had uh, dealings with uh, AliExpress. First of all, this is kind of a very ancient thing. I, got, I, I took a look at AliExpress today. There's no Tennis guitar site there. It's a little bit racist too, kind of implying that if you're on AliExpress then it must be a fake Chipson type guitar and you're deceiving somebody as it's ungranted there are sites like that, but then again AliExpress has a lot of legitimate business on there too. For example, Shiji Guitars, which is very popular with uh, many YouTubers as well. I think you've seen that Daryl Braun and Philip McKnight have both reviewed Shiji Guitars and they're on AliExpress. You know, so by are they guilty of being scam artists too? By because they're on the same uh, shopping site. I bought things from AliExpress. I never had a problem before. And the second thing he brought up was a long time ago they used uh, pictures that weren't their own guitars. You know, they had something from PRS and the one from uh, Ormsby, which is also very old news, right? No, it's not nothing new. With this it's about two years, three years old news, and. She, you know, Tennis Guitars at the time apologized directly to Ornsby at least for what happened with that and I'm sure they'd be allowed to move on, right? And they said whoever was responsible for that was punished. So, but anyways, this helps to, for KDH to make the framework that a Tennis is some sort of scam company. So like I said, if you're going to accuse somebody of a scam artist, you should have some good evidence. Right now we just had, you know, things in the past. But one of his major arguments, it has to do with a pickup company that claimed that they did not get paid by 10S. And this is one of his crux arguments that these are just, just scam artists. But it turns out in a reply letter from 10S Guitars that that company actually was compensated for their services. And then KDH did put a follow-up video which says, oh yeah, I, uh, 
I asked that pickup company and they didn't give me a good reply, so I'm going to cut that part out of the video. So he has one of his big major arguments, it's already out the lunch, it's proven to be false. If it was me and that big of an argument was thrown out, I'd take down the whole video and issue an apology to tennis. But now he left it up there anyways because his friend didn't finish getting his guitar yet, right? He then mentioned something about them losing a guitar. However, in follow-up video, it turns out this lost guitar actually was shipped to the customer who was in Uruguay. And if you know anything about shipping, a lot, a lot of shipping to South America is pretty hard, especially surface mail. A lot of South American countries don't accept surface mail. But uh, this guy from Uruguay thought he could get it, so they sent it to Uruguay, got shipped back to China, they sent it again, got shipped back again, and they contact this guy, you know, we can't ship by surface to Uruguay, can you pay for uh, like a FedEx or UPS to get it there? And the guy there is course, too cheap to do that, so he made up some bizarre thing about going to Italy to pick up the guitar. And what seems like to me that's not a very trustworthy source to be talking about lost guitars. And considering all the trouble they went through, I'm kind of surprised it wasn't get lost. And you know, I, I it's not unknown for other guitar companies to have lost things. As we know, FedEx never loses anything in the mail. Was that sarcasm? So in this case, with KDH's two of his major arguments against Tennis turned out to be totally false. But yet he persisted. So I'm kind of disgusted in the way KDH handled this thing. So even if somebody sent him an email saying, Oh, I can't get my guitar from the company, what should I do? There's probably a hundred other things he could have done besides making a video calling the company thieves, calling them crooks. But that's what he did. What could he have done? We said himself, well, they should have contacted PayPal, right? If you contact PayPal, you get a refund from PayPal. They will, what they will do is they'll contact the company, try to negotiate, see what's going on with the tennis guitars. And if tennis guitars does not give PayPal a good answer, they will refund your money. And of course, then tennis guitars would be in PayPal's uh, bad books, you know. And I'm sure tennis guitars is not going to ignore PayPal if they come contacting, talking about a problem. But of course, if he did that, he couldn't have made a video and get all those views and clicks that he wanted to keep his name up there. So he decided to make a video just to make sure he gets his uh, uh, exposure as he wants. So it's obvious whoever contacted KDH about this knows very little if nothing about ordering a custom guitar from an Asian company or any, maybe any company from that matter. And KDH should have known better to give him better advice than to try to expose the company as he puts it there, right? What, what he ended up doing with this guy ends up being extortion. Now in Tennis's first reply email just reading it, you could tell that they're like really pissed off at KDH. You know, they're really angry, and they say things like, "What do you want? Money, guitars?" And KDH thinks that's a bribe. Dude, you're not being bribed. They are paying your ransom. You're the one who put this on them, right? This is extortion, right? Check up the meaning of distortion. I'll throw it on the screen here. Is gaining of property or money by almost any kind of force or threat of violence, property damage, harm to reputation, or unfavorable government action. That's you. You're basically trying to harm their reputation, aren't you, right? To get your buddy his uh, guitar, right? You're trying to be all like, uh, I'm just an uh, innocent warrior, but if you're, if you're just all innocent on this, why don't you get rid of this internet video and go through the proper means? There are ways to do this other than making a video calling people crooks. So basically, KD tried to harm the reputation of 10S, maybe destroy it, just so his buddy here can get a guitar. Which kind of borderlines extortion, don't you think? What do I think should happen here? Well, 10S, you know, um, first of all, I think they should just refund this guy's money. You know, because if, if it happens once and somebody can go crying to KDH to get, a, get his guitar, bumped up in the lineup or something like that, you know, it's going to happen again, right? So I just give him the money, cut ties, you know, I think that's what Jeff Kiesel would do, you know, cut ties and get it off there. As for KDH, I think you should kind of stop making these expose videos. You have made good content that doesn't involve villainizing everybody. So why not we get rid of this villainizing thing? Do you, do you really want to be the TMZ of the guitar gear world on the internet? 
Don't you have anything better to do? If I were you, KDH, I'd take down that 10S guitar video you still have left on there, delete, erase those videos, not just privatize them or whatever it is you're doing to them, and maybe issue an apology to 10S guitars, as they've gone out of the way to prove that most of your arguments were wrong. And think twice before you go on the net calling people crooks. Because if you're going to push at people so hard that way, don't be surprised when they push back. What you've basically done is bully 10S into just so you and your buddy can get your guitars out, right? And I thought you were really against bullying. I mean, didn't you go crying to Dovidas because some random troll suggested that you committed a crime yourself? But yet here you turn around and you do the same thing to 10S guitars? Is that consistent in what you've been doing so far? One other note about KDH videos, he goes out of his way there to say that the people who have demonstrated his guitars, uh, tennis guitars online are all innocent and we shouldn't attack them anyway. But he has no trouble throwing their faces on his video and mentioning three of them by name. I think he can either take this as a veiled threat that he's like looking out these channels trying to uh, get some dirt on you as well. Or he's trying to name drop maybe. Why was that necessary? You didn't even have to put the names on there, did you? You didn't have to put the channels up. I think you should, I think these channels that were mentioned in here probably should take it as a veiled threat from KDH. Either he's either calling you idiots for demonstrating their products, or he's calling you criminal as well. So how are we supposed to take your opinion of these people? You're saying they're idiots for demonstrating 10S products? Are you trying to scare them away from the brand? Wow, it's getting harder and harder to find the virtue in this video. So anyways, that's all I had to say in that matter. It's not my usual video. But uh, I hope the best of luck to all parties involved. And I hope uh, people feel a little more confident in 10S guitars after this, uh, even after this fiasco that uh, KDH uh, unleashed on them. Anyways, take care. Salut.